In the waning years of the 1920s, the Lenke family was suffering through a sinking economy. Railroads were shutting down, and the coal mines where the family had worked were either closing or in turmoil. Here Bonnie Lenke Smeltzer describes the scene in the eastern Colorado coal town of Serene, Colorado. Serene is gone now, but Bonnie remembers what happened the year she was born. Dad was looking for work, and he couldn't find any work, but he was able to get on at the Columbine Mine in Serene. So they moved to Serene, and that's where I was born. I was born um, October 19, 1927, the night that the miners went on strike. And uh, there was a lot of... A lot of uh, problems there, controversies and everything between the miners and uh, and the uh, the heads of the mine and and uh, they finally had so much trouble that they they uh, surrounded the camp with barbed wire and the national guard was brought in and when I was probably about two months old, one night my mother tells about a wash tub falling off the outside of a house and it made such a clatter that it startled the National Guard and somebody that was up on the water tower started shooting and 11 men were killed at that time. And one of the bullets um, came, were, came, hit under my, the bedroom window. This was I, at the Serene? At Serene. Mm -hmm. So my dad continued to work once the miners quit, you know, the, mi the strike was settled, my dad continued work, working for a couple of months, but it was so dangerous because they had a lot of scab later, labor working, and they were inexperienced at mining, and then, uh, you know, there were a lot of accidents. So mother and dad decided that they didn't want to be raising a family in a coal mining camp, in a camp, so they moved back to Glenwood Springs. And of course, that's where my mother's family lived. And that's where Ram Palenke was still living. So what anyway. Was, what was the problem at the mine? Was it, was it wages? Wages, mm-hmm. That, that was happening all over that part of, the, of Colorado. And you've, of course, heard of the Ludlow, Ludlow. Massacre, massacre. That happened earlier than this thing. But I even have some clippings of Town of Serene that shows where the person was up on the water tower and all that stuff. It's quite interesting. So your parents were basically living in an armed camp. Yeah, they were. And since mother couldn't get out to go to the hospital in Lafayette, the company doctor was called in, and he didn't know anything about midwifery. So uh, the good friends of ours, Mrs. Maccarelli, and the Maccarellis used to, they, were, they are from, the, they've been, they lived up the four mile and mined in that area. Anyway, they were good friends of ours, and Mrs. Amaccarelli was the midwife, and Dr. Porter, the company doctor, just spent most of his time smoking a cigar and sitting out by the warm kitchen stove. So his While the women took care of it. Yeah, right. So And so we moved, they, they moved back to Glenwood Springs, my mother and dad and my brother Jay and I, and I was just a few months old when we moved back to Glenwood Springs. How old was your brother? He was two years older than I. And so my dad, of course, at that time, you know, 1929 was really bad depression times. Well, my grandfather, Charles Lenke, had this house up on Lincoln, Lincoln Avenue. And so every time my dad was out of work, that was where we went, back to Grandpa Lenke's house. During the Depression, we lived in many different places. And one place that we lived, if we weren't living with Grandpa Lenke, we were living wherever we could. And I remember that we moved to um, a place in Cardiff where we lived in a chicken coop for until Christmas time. And that's where the Morgans eventually lived. But at that time, it belonged to uh, someone named Thompson. And um, when they left for the winter, we moved from the chicken coop into this house, which was 
you know, right next to the, where the chicken coop was. I have pictures of the chicken coop. It's still there too. A Any, chicken coop. How did you get by in a chicken? Well, coop? it was a it was a very well made one because it was chinked logs, and I do remember what it looked like inside. It it had a cook stove, and it had a a, a stand where you could have your water bucket. And didn't have any division of rooms, you know. It was just a, cu- a curtain, kind of kept the bedroom separate from the rest of it. I have a picture of myself outside that, in my winter coat, getting ready to go to kindergarten at the Cardiff School. And so we lived there until, uh, uh, as I said, Christmas, and then we moved into this house and uh, stayed there until school was out. And that would be. Let's see, what year would that be? Uh, probably 1931, uh, 32. That next summer, 1933, my dad uh, signed on to the Civilian Conservation Corps. And we spent a summer up near Marveen Lake, n- near Trappers Lake, up in that area. Uh, my dad went there in June, because you had to sign on for six months. He went there in June and he got a place prepared for us. We lived in a tent because most of the men that went to the CCC were single men, out of work. But my dad was married and had a family. So uh, uh, they made provisions for a few of the men who had families to bring their families along. So we lived in a walled tent all summer. My dad dug a foundation under the tent. It was probably two to three feet deep, so that you had headroom when you're standing up. My dad was almost six foot tall, so needed some headroom. He made a stove out of a a drum, a big oil drum, had a chimney, and my mother was able to even bake bread in that thing. I don't know how she did it, but anyway. Uh, and he made, he was the CCC camp barber, because he had uh, been when they returned from Germany, uh, my uh, grandmother Victoria, his bro- her brother Martin Venuti, was um, uh, uh, he was a stonemason. The family was were stonemasons. Anyway, he talked my grandpa and grandma Lenke into letting my dad take a barber course. So he was an apprentice barber. He, he has his little. I have his little thing that said he's a, an apprentice barber. Anyway, so he was the barber at the CCC camp, and he always cut my hair. I w- always wore a Dutch bob all <laughs> until I got in high school. <laughs> but anyway, we spent a wonderful summer there. That's I do remember that. It was the summer before I went into first grade, and uh, that's when the raspberries would grow abundantly, and they were big, and the wild strawberries were big. <clears throat> and my dad would often be able to come home for lunch, come home to the tent. And uh, so I'd take my mother's aluminum measure cup, measuring cup and walk down the trail and pick berries on the way and meet him. And, and also, since he was the camp barber, he made a barber chair out of uh, quaking aspens, aspen trees, and mounted it on a stump, and it actually revolved around. <laughs> he made a, a bed for me out of, Aspen and a doll bed for my doll and this thing. He was always very, very handy. Just like his father. He's just like his father. Yeah. In fact, I have a a little piece of furniture. I don't have it. My daughter has it that my grandpa Lenke made out of uh, dynamite crates when he lived at Sunlight. Had a drawer and everything. And he that. that was the piece of furniture that one of the pieces that he gave to the Modas. And then when uh Years later, when my th- mother and dad and George and I went up to visit the Modas, Mary and Moda insisted I take it. So, And if you turn it upside down, you can see that it says dynamite. <laughs> huh. I'd love to get a picture of that sometime. Yeah, that's a great thing. So anyway, um, <clears throat> after we returned from the CCC camp, um, I entered first grade. I was about a month late because... He didn't leave the Marvine Creek area until October. And then he had three more months to fulfill his six-month contract with the CCC. So he, uh, was, uh, he did some work down at the Colorado National Monument. 
Well, let's see. We've come up to the 1930s. and my... What do you remember about this being up there that summer? I mean, tell me more about some of your memories from... Uh, I remember one thing. It, well, they would have boxing matches in the camp, you know, for recreation. And I, they had a boxing ring, and I remember one time uh, my, dad, uh, my dad played the harmonica, and he also played the bandonium. He brought they brought that over from Germany, and somehow that bandonium disappeared. But now, what's a bandonium for those? It's who like don't know. an accordion, only it has buttons on both sides instead of keys on one side and buttons on the other. So he played the harmonica, and my mother played the guitar. And uh, one night, at, when they were having a, a boxing match for entertainment, my mother and dad were playing, and they set me up on the boxing ring and had me sing <laughs> along with them when, when we sang When It's Springtime in the Rockies. <laughs> That's one thing I remember, too, about going to school at Cardiff. Um, Alma Harris was the teacher, and they always she always put on a wonderful Christmas program in that one-room schoolhouse at Cardiff. And I remember that I don't remember a thing about the play except that I was in it and I was a Christmas doll. And they pushed me onto the, sh the stage in a box and then stood me up and wound me up and I sang When It's Springtime in the Rockies, which wasn't really appropriate for Christmas, but maybe that was the only song I knew. <laughs> but I still can remember looking out in that, over the crowd. There were a lot of people there. Yeah. It's funny how you can remember just little snatches exactly. of things. It, were there other kids up there in the summer, up at Marvin? Uh, yes, uh, there was a family whose last name was Shader, and they had a little girl that was probably about three and then a, and a baby. And I was the only uh, uh, child my age that I remember. I think there were just the two families that were married. Um, Jay, my brother, my half-brother, spent the summer with the Brucci family in Grand Junction because we really didn't have enough room for all four of us to be up there for the summer. So my dad worked not only as a barber, but he worked out, you know, building trails and picnic tables and bridges and things like that. They well, you did. must have been the sweetheart of the camp, though, <laughs> being the only little, the only little yeah. kid. Yes, I don't remember anything about... Th oh, I do remember the night that I sang when it's springtime in the Rockies. I think it was that same night. Anyway, the doctor, the camp doctor, always smoked cigars. And I must have been the apple of his eye because he had me on his lap and he was bouncing me up and down on his knee, smoking that cigar. And to this day, I can't stand the smell of a cigar. <laughs> it makes me sick. But another thing, I know that my mother uh, made uh, jam, jelly. She, we picked uh, choke cherries, and I can still see that bag of choke cherries hanging in that white flour sack, you know, dripping the, uh, dripping the juice into the pail. And she uh, made a quilt that summer that we were up there, and my, it was on a frame, and my dad fixed it so she could pull it up, you know, on a pulley up to the top of the tent during the daytime when she wasn't working on it and then lower it down when she wanted to work on it. So it was a a wonderful summer actually. I do I have some a couple of pictures of that area and the the tent we stayed in and of the camp too, which is nice. And so I have I have a lot of you know, we were poor as church mice. And just lived from one uh, part-time job to another, but I can remember good times too. We're rich in many ways. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. very.